folks who have worked with React, I'm sure you guys know what React Context API does. If I go search for React Context and open up the first link, which is React's official documentation, this right here, this first paragraph is going to take you through a very common problem, which is prop drilling. It's inconvenient when you have to pass props down to multiple levels in your component tree, but Context API helps you with this problem. It does that by making that information available anywhere in the tree. So if there's a component 10 levels deep and wants to access a piece of data that's created in the root app component, the component that sits at the very top of the hierarchy, you can put it in a context and without prop drilling, access it inside the deep component. Now, someone who's new to React would think of this as a silver bullet and literally just use it as their main state management tool. I mean, I wouldn't blame them to be very honest because this first paragraph doesn't tell you the caveats of this API. But if you see on the side here, there are these two sections that are going to highlight those particular caveats. So let me go to this first section. The very first line of this section talks about overusing context and why you may not want to use it for any state that you want to use or share across your app. There's also primary use cases highlighted in the section below. And if you see, most of it revolves around data that is not updated frequently. So why is context API not recommended for storing frequently updating state? I'll show you that with the help of an example. So I have this react application, which is essentially a to-do list app. I'll take you through each and every component step by step. Nothing here is challenging and difficult to understand. All of it should come to you naturally. I have the header component that is just displaying a text and it uses the header type. So I have styles in place for all of these components inside app CSS and index CSS. You don't have to worry about this. If you want, I can put this, I can put this entire project in a GitHub repository and share the link with you guys. Then similarly, there's a sidebar component that has a bunch of links. None of these links really take you anywhere. I just have it for the look and feel. Nothing that you see here really matters. The two important components that do matter are the to-do editor and the to-do list component. This to-do list component refers to this context API, this context hook that I've created inside this context folder. I'll come to that in a second. We have a bunch of items that's being exposed from this context hook. All of these items are then used inside this JSX. So it essentially just renders a list of tasks and you have an option to add a task as well. There's this input field that takes in the title or the actual task name. And you have a button that actually adds this task to the task list. The list is rendered inside this UL tag and it's a pretty straightforward list. And on clicking any of these to do items, I'm going to set it to complete. And at the same time, I set it as the selected to do item. I'm doing this because the moment I click on a to do item, I'm also showing it inside the to do editor component. This to do editor component lets me edit whatever content is already present inside that to do item. So this again is pretty straightforward. There's an update function that updates the actual to do item. And there's a bunch of JSX over here. Now, if I go to the context file, I have types for the content that's present inside the context. I use the create context method that's present natively inside react. It's all regular react context boilerplate. I use the hook pattern, which essentially creates a hook for your context. So I don't really access the context directly with the help of the use context hook. I do that over here inside this custom hook, and then I use this across my app. This is a very common pattern that you'll see across multiple React projects. And at the end inside app.tsx, not inside app here, inside main.tsx, you'll see that we are wrapping the app component with the to-do provider. So this is essentially the entire React app. And if I run this, let me also show you how it looks like in the browser. So npm run dev. So this is what the app looks like. You have the header, the sidebar, and this is the to-do list section. And this on the right is the to-do editor section. I can select any of these to-do items. And the moment I select it, it's also going to open up in the to-do editor. So I can edit the to-do item from this editor and it will reflect it in the to-do list as well. I can add a new item inside this to-do list and it works as expected. So everything works functionally inside this application. But now I'll actually show you the caveat that comes with React Context. And to actually show you that, I'll need one more library inside my application. I'll use React Scan 
to show you the number of re-renders that happen whenever we update something inside our application. So React Scan is essentially like React DevTools, but uh, I find it much more user friendly. So I'll use that. So I'm on the React Scan GitHub documentation page and I'll go to the CDN section. I'll copy the script and inside my index.html file, I'll paste it in my head section. Let me save this. And if I go inside the browser again, now you'll see we have this widget here that is essentially coming from the React Scan library. And anytime I update any state inside this application, it is going to trigger a re-render somewhere because state updates do trigger re-renders, but we'll actually see what all gets re-rendered. So let me set this to complete this first task. I'll just toggle it to complete and you'll see that it actually re-renders the entire application. So this header section, the sidebar section, the to-do list and the to-do editor, all four of these components will re-render. But ideally that should not have happened because we are only using the context inside the to-do list component and the to-do editor component. So if only these two components would have re-rendered, then it would have been perfectly fine. But this is actually causing a re-render across the application, which also re-renders these two components that have nothing to do with the state. So if I even try to update any text inside this to-do, you'll see that the entire application is re-rendering, which is definitely not good for this application's overall performance. And that is the caveat that I was talking about that React Context brings in. But the reason why this happens is because React Context default behavior is to re-render all the children when the value passed to the provider changes. So even if the header or the sidebar don't really use the values from the context, since it's wrapping the entire app component, Anytime there's a change inside the value, it's going to re-render all of the components inside the provider. And in this case, it's the entire app tree. So that's why it's re-rendering all the components, even though these two items have nothing to do with the state. So in large applications where you have multiple states being used across different components, putting them inside one or even multiple contexts can cause so many unnecessary re-renders throughout the application, which could slow down your app significantly. So if there's a solution that only updates the components that are actually using the piece of state and not every other component, that would be great. And Zustan does exactly that. So Zustan or even Jotai for that matter are dedicated state management libraries that use a subscription based model. So there's essentially a Zustan store that you'll create, which takes care of all the state management, creating, updating, deleting, all of that is handled inside the Zustan store. You expose the state and the methods used for updating the state from this store and any component that wants to use these exposed objects and methods can subscribe to them. Only those components now will be affected and the ones that do not use the store won't re-render at all. So let's tweak our example to use Zustan store and not the context API. For that, I'll have to first install Zustan. So let me open up a new terminal and I'll type in npm install Zustan. While this is installing, let me open up a new folder. I'll call it store and inside here, let me call use to do's store.ts. So I'm going to create a hook for the Zustan store and to not waste any time, I'm going to just copy the entire store inside this file. So again, for folks who have not worked with Zustan, even if you're aware of a little bit of state management here and there, even if you have worked with Redux or context, it's going to look somewhat similar. So this is the type for the state that's present inside this Zustan store. I'm going to use the create method that's used to create a Zustan store that's exposed from Zustan, obviously. And if you see here, I have set the to do's to a default state. I have two items by default, essentially the same as what we have over here. And we have the same set of items that we were exposing in the context file. The only difference here is that we use the set and the get methods present inside Zustan. Set is used to actually set the state, update, create, whatever. And get is used to access that state. So I am using get here in order to toggle complete a specific to-do item. 
So I have to actually get that particular item and only then I can update its state, right? So that is what I am doing here with the help of this get method. It's pretty straightforward to read even if you have not worked with Zustan. That's why I love this library because it's lightweight and very developer friendly. So let's save this. And now we'll have to actually update all the context subscription to Zustan store subscription inside the to-do list and the to-do editor file. So let me go inside to-do list here. And instead of doing this, I'll simply replace it with this and let me import it from the use store. Let me get rid of this context. Similarly, inside to do editor, I'll again update all of my imports. Let me get rid of this. Let me import to do store and let's get rid of this import statement. I save this and now let's go back to the browser. Now, anytime I make any changes to the state, Remember that only this component, the to-do list component and the to-do editor component, these two components are subscribing to the state that's present inside the Zustan store. So previously what happened anytime I changed or updated any of the state that's present inside the context, it essentially re-rendered the entire component. So the header as well as the sidebar also got re-rendered. Let's see what happens this time. I'm going to toggle this to complete and you'll see that only these two components got re-rendered. The rest of the application stayed as it is. So let's try that again. I'll update this text and this time again, it's only re-rendering these two components and not the header and the sidebar. That's because Zustan works on a subscription based model wherein only the components that are subscribed to the Zustan store are going to re-render because they are the ones that actually deal with the state and are affected by the state. The rest of the application doesn't really use any of the items that's exposed from the Zustan store. That's why it doesn't make sense to re-render them. And that's exactly how Zustan works behind the scenes. So basically each call to use to do store, the hook that we created for the Zustan store creates a direct subscription to that slice of state. If the selected state doesn't change, the component doesn't re-render, no memoization or no lifting is needed. In this case, header and sidebar are completely disconnected from the state updates. They are safe from unnecessary re-renders. So does this mean you ditch react context entirely? I won't say that just use it for what it was meant for. So essentially static or global configuration, that is where the context API shines. But if you're managing frequent updates or large amounts of UI state, Zustand or libraries like Jotai and Redux is what you should be looking at. So yeah, that was pretty much it for this video. Do let me know in the comments if you have any other topics in mind that I could cover. If you're new here, do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.